Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Afria CEO, Erwin Simon. Welcome back, Erwin. Good to see you. Good to see you, Tessera. Good, e good afternoon. This is a big number. Is this pandemic-related demand for, for cannabis or what? So first of all, absolutely demand. Um, and with our great brands, our great product, our great innovation, our great distribution, both in Canada and Europe with our medical, um, consumers want cannabis. And uh, more and more consumers want the product for pain, more and more anxiety, sleep. Um, recreational. So it shows you the demand that uh, consumers want to buy recreational and medical cannabis. But, but I was just wondering if you think it specifically is tied to COVID-19 and, and the lockups that we're seeing happen again and, and the fact that people are spending more time at home and potentially are a little bit more anxious as, as we continue to deal with these record case numbers. You know, I don't think it's because of COVID, I think that is just the change in the way consumers are living today and realize what cannabis does for them. And it can give them a good high. It can help them with, you know, all the other medical attributes that I've talked about. And, you know, in Canada, there's now close to 1,200 stores or over 1,200 stores. So also it's just availability and the distribution of the products. And the other thing is what we've done a great job, Sarah, is building our brands, consumers trusting our brands, knowing that they're getting a product that has gone through quality control, that has gone through regulation, and that it's priced right. Was there, Owen, a little bit of a disappointment in the Canadian adult use business? I don't think there was a little bit of disappointment. Well, for one of the things we have gone through and sort of, you know, this is about two and a half years now that cannabis is legalized. And what we're going through is trying to get the balance of inventory and demand. And, you know, we had some out of stocks as we built out our inventories, you know, in some of the provinces. Um, and just in regards to visibility, that's where some of our, you know, supply issues were. But I got to tell you, it, it is amazing in some of the numbers I look at at pre-rolls and vapes, et cetera, in what consumers are consuming today in those products. So you're joining with Tilray soon. You were on with us at the announcement of the merger. Big bet yep. on the U.S. at a time where I don't know that we've spoken to you since the Democrats look like are going to get a slim majority in, in the Senate. What's your, what's your expectation at this point for what we're going to see as far as decriminalization or, or even legalization at a federal level in this country? So listen, timing has been good for us in regards to announcing our Sweetwater deal and with legalization, with the opportunity to grow our drink business and come out with THC drinks and, you know, um, getting it through distribution, whether it's through stores that sell alcohol, sell beer, et cetera. In regards to Tilray and Afria coming together, you know, it creates the largest revenue cannabis company in the world today. There's a lot of, you know, intel within Tilray that will help us both from a medical standpoint and both from a recreational standpoint, standpoint in Canada and Europe. But with that, we do with Sweetwater and we do with, you know, Manitoba Harvest have a good business in, in the U.S. I, I say this here, Sarah, and I get asked this question all the time. You know, now that you have a Democratic Senate, and a Democratic Congress and a Democratic president, I think things have changed and moved up within two years. I think something will happen, whether it's a safe bank will pass, bank act will pass, whether legalization of medical cannabis will pass you know, decriminalization, but something will happen within the next year with cannabis. You know, we just heard us talking your, a few minutes ago in regards to cannabis being used in regards to uh, the WWF wrestling. And with that, you hear about all the sports now where cannabis will be able to use for pain. Um, and you just talked about how many trillions of dollars the deficit will be in regards to Biden's new budget. Where's a lot of that going to come from? Is tax dollars and what would contribute a lot to those you know, deficit is legalizing cannabis. And at least the most recent Gallup poll is 68% of Americans want cannabis legalized. Oh, and do, do um, uh, marijuana-based uh, drinks replace alcohol? Do they complement alcohol? Will the two be in the same drink, or are they alternatives? Well, I think they complement it. I think, again, if you come back and look at THC drinks, you know, they're drinks that don't have a lot of calories, drinks that don't have a lot of hangovers, and drinks that, you know, allow you from a health health that doesn't have some of the effects of alcohol. So I think they're absolutely complementary. 
Um, listen, you see what's happened in regards to the vodka seltzer business and how that has grown. And I think that comes right up there in size. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.